Uh, nine months ago, I bought this big module into the factory here and uh, thought I'll get onto that in the next couple of weeks. Got Ellen on the job. G'day guys, welcome back to the mould. Uh, Ellen and I here are restoring the large internal stair module for the port hull. Um, I pulled Ellen out of her holiday mode after she completed her schooling and uh, she's heading off to university in the new year so we've put it to good work and uh, she's certainly learnt the talent of, uh, of polishing over a few uh, hours here and <laughs> polishing this mould up and in fact her comment to me at the end of it was she found it strangely satisfying so pretty happy to see that it runs in the family and uh, we're going to get into it and I'm going to get right up to gel coating in this issue so stay tuned. What this is is the large double staircase on the port side of the boat and that basically goes and wraps around the, the port head. So it's a fairly substantial module. It is one of the bigger ones. I've actually got one more bigger one to go, which is the uh, saloon or the salon dinette or the big table and chairs that uh, you know it forms the main part of the saloon. But uh, this one here is, is a pretty intricate shape. It's going to be probably a good full week of work just to get two to three layers on it so uh, on my own I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's got uh, a large section here this is actually the stern staircase here you can see that down the back here and then around the other side obviously the the bow staircase that goes down to the forward cabin so yeah pretty uh, big module and I had Ellen here the other day uh, my daughter doing uh, some work for me she's now finished school and off to uni next year so she's got to earn a keep um, Poor kid, gave her uh, two layers to polish this up. So she's gone through uh, 800 grit and 1000 grit uh, wet and dry sandpaper all over this. And, and, and to, to her credit, she's done a brilliant job. She high pressure water cleaned it, done everything. So I'm pretty much ready to now do a 1200 grit hand polish as well as a machine polish. And then uh, I'll work through the, the, the polishing stages finally to the sealer glaze, which is the, the uh, release product sealing, um, gel coat sealing product, and then I'll work into my release waxes. So probably two or three good days of work just to get this thing restored, as it is a monster. And uh, then uh, next week, provided it stays cool enough, I'll, uh, I'll get onto gel coating and, and glassing it. Uh, it is middle of summer, so anything goes at this time of the year, but I'll figure while it's in here and it's pouring rain outside, may as well do something constructive. Come here, buddy. What's the problem? What's the problem with me? You're singing. Yeah, what's wrong with singing? It's crap. This guy, I'm, I'm in here to this crap. polishing, and this has All a go day. at me for singing. Come on. Sing. Get out. Sing. Get out of my factory. Sing. Out. No, sing I'm not singing. Sing. Go on, get out. Thank you. you. Can't sing. Get out. Get out. Get back to work. Go on, bloody work. It's what I've got to deal with, guys. What I've got to deal with. I can safely say after around about nine hours of polishing that uh, I've given it a good crack, um, plus a two or three hours of Ellen giving that, that first sand on the um, with the 800 grit. So pretty much it's had a full restore, and uh, and I think you'll agree. You know that the finish is absolutely amazing. Given the things, you know, the module's about 12 years old and sat in the sun for over 10 years without any anyone touching it. That's the beauty of this stuff. And I keep harping on about it, but the better the preparation now, it. Uh, the result is, is evident at the end when I pull it off the mould and it just needs a light buff, you know, there's no extra repairs needed. However, there's a tiny little area up on the top step there, which is right on the top of where the chamfer panel drops down in the double stairs. It needs a little bit of plasticine on it. I'm not gonna do a full repair on it as a gel coat thing. If we ever produce another boat out of these moulds, definitely I'll do that. But uh, all of the edges, all the rebates and all the flanges are in, in such good condition on this module. And, and given the life it's had, given it's sat, um, it's been moved three times, like serious moves. These are on the back of trucks with straps over them and, uh, and sat out in the sun in all types of weathers, including cyclones and you know, storms and the like, and, and sitting baking in the sun out here in my factory for a, another two years. Um, I think 
the result here, you know, for a day's work, definitely worth the effort. Um, the beauty of that is it means that all fiberglass boats can be restored exactly the same way. So you'd apply what I've done here to, you know, a 40 foot catamaran if you're prepared to do the work, uh, which, you know, I've had to do with my mould. So if I've had to do it, I don't see why anyone else wouldn't. But um, I'm ready to do two coats of sealer glaze. So that's that TR uh, gel coat sealer that I use. And it also acts as a, as a permanent release agent on the, uh, on the module. And then I'll go into my three hand coats of uh, the Canuva wax or the TR high temperature release wax that I've used on everything else I've done uh, with total success. So by this time, um, in about three days, I should be able to gel it up and, and get on to laminating it. And, and it's going to be a five day laminating this one. It'll be one layer a day. It's a monster. It's going to take around about eight to nine hours to do one layer on this thing because of very intricate shapes and everything. I mean, this thing is absolutely like a baby's bum. Um, the finish on this thing, wow. I reckon it's the best one I've done, to be honest. It's uh, probably a good job too, because if you look up in here, I've got some pretty intricate little shapes uh, around the stair area. And this is actually the, this area that you see on the flat top here is actually the, uh, the landing at the top of the stairs that goes down into the chamfer panel. So it's pretty complicated and very, uh, very challenging laminating to do so i'm gonna to have to really be prepared when i do this one because i'm gonna to have to do this in some pretty major sections but yeah finish wise it's uh it's brilliant and this is the uh wrap around or the i guess you uh, you call it the surround of the of the port head um and obviously we've been looking at it sort of inside out and upside down so you can see once again there's the stairs so that's the floor down in the hull and then uh this section here this uh, region down here, this actually becomes a shelf on top of the head. Uh, that that uh, this flange here, that's along the edge here, will actually be glassed into the the deck mold. So, yeah, pretty complicated piece of uh, piece of um, the puzzle here. And then this area up in here is actually that's actually a door, obviously. And then the, and we've got a cupboard over here. So this forms a shelf here that'll be gel coated. Looking up inside, probably easier to see it from the inside, but. Yeah, you can see that's a set of stairs with a landing. Um, hopefully by the end of next week, I might be able to pull it off. So I just thought I'd show you the sort of preparation that I uh, go to, to to make a module like this. Uh, we're at three days so far of polishing and restoring and then release waxing. And then I put down a tarp here and I cable tie it to the sides of the of the uh of the pseudo spray booth and what that does is it stops it from lifting as i walk on it because no matter how careful i am there's going to be overspray this room here i've also lifted the roof by about two feet to allow for the height of this module so it's uh it's like a bit of uh like a murder room in here and i'm also going to need two ladders so i've got a step ladder here I've got another one up the other end and, uh, and that'll save me having to move ladders around because I found the last time I did a big one like this wasn't quite as big as this. Oh, it was exhausting just lifting the ladder around. But uh, yeah, very well prepared for this layup. Um, if you look back here, this mould's in absolutely amazing condition. So I'm looking at all these intricate little steps here. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me here and it's getting up to around 28 degrees in, uh, in the ambient temperature here at the moment. So and then I've moved all of my machine, my compressor, my air dryer and my machine are all in line here so I can get to every part of it. I've just drained my compressor. That's a pretty important fact that uh, you need to consider when you're using a compressor. I drain it every single day, this thing. I mean, it's one of the driest compressors I've ever owned, but it's still, when you're condensing air, you're going, or you're sorry, compressing air, you're going to collect a lot of water in there. So you make sure that's bone dry and that starts... Uh, with a reasonably dry airstream into my air dryer and then follow on to my machine. Now I've got a bucket of acetone here. I've been soaking this machine and it is all clean. One thing I do need to do prior to spraying or putting any other material in it is make sure that all these hoses and everything is empty of acetone because if I start spraying acetone on the mould, I may as well start again. So I want to start spraying with gel coat. So the first couple of sprays I do are generally into a bucket or into a rubbish bin or something to get rid of any latent acetone that might be resting within the the uh, the system and then I'm ready to spray up. Um, I've just cracked out a new uh, gel, 20 litre gel coat or 20 kilos of gel that's in there. What I always do when I turn the machine on is I always make the reflex tube which is this blue one because what's going to happen is the, the fluid is going to travel up here down this black tube into the pump up and then back 
through the blue tube and out. Now there's guaranteed to be some acetone in there. I don't want that mixing with my gel coat as it refluxes. And why we reflux is it to make sure that there isn't any air bubbles in this system so that we get a clean pumping and not splattering. I don't want it to splatter because that will, un will not catalyze correctly. So we need to reflux it for about 10 minutes. Um, the first couple of seconds, I always reflux it into a spare bucket just to get rid of any uh, residual acetone or air bubbles or anything. It can get a bit messy. So very important that I follow that procedure every single time. I've also, you'll notice the gun's all the way down there. I've actually moved it back down there. I had a little bit of an acetone leak, so I've gone back and checked all the O-rings. It seems to be okay now. So heaps of prep prior to even starting a layup, the spray up, but um, you know, essential that you do that or you're gonna end up with crap everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my machine on, add some air there. And this top gauge here is my pump pressure and it's gonna start to pump and it's going to be pretty full on for the first couple of seconds so I'll get a little bit of pressure in it and the main pump will start to agitate and what we're going to do, we're going to have a look over here sorry if I'm bouncing it around here and you're going to see what's going to come out of here it could be white, could be acetone but it's going to splatter everywhere so you just got to make sure you've got your glasses on and it's now pumping up through this steel tube filling the chamber and we're going to start to get reflux here in a second which means that it's going to burp and uh, I've got this yuck bucket here, we call it the yuck bucket. Here we go, we're gonna get a bit of a burp here. Oh, look at that, see that was pure acetone came out of that. And uh, yucko. So now I've got that open, let's see how much actually acetone is going to come through this system now. No leaks. Here it comes, so that's acetone there in forward of the, of the gel coat. Still acetone. Now we're putting the gel coat through. So there we go. That was worth doing that. I caught a heap of acetone there. All right, that's good stuff, and that's pretty much all I need to do. Okay, so the blue tube is now in the gel coat. We're going to start to see that refluxing, and I'm going to get that going for five to ten minutes to make sure there's nothing but gel coat coming through. You can see it there. And a smooth flow, and that's what we want is a smooth flow with no real air bubbles. So we've got to let that reflux for about five to ten minutes at least. All right, so the next section is the catalyst. Um, I need to turn off this uh, this cock valve and basically start to reflux the catalyst as well. I'm gonna give it five minutes or so before I do that um, to make sure that I'm getting a good catalyst flow. And then once I see the pressure build up in here, that means I'm ready to go. I've got a fully line, a full um, catalyst line with no bubbles in it. So there's something I always do. I've got this lid, uh, not a very good looking lid, but what I put this on, over the top of the gel coat and then I put some plastic over the top of that and why I do that is because if there's any unincorporated catalyst floating around in the air here uh, this is actually a separate room to where I'm spraying but if there's any unincorporated catalyst it will not set that jug off because there's no wor no reason why I'd ever want to set that off too early um, I do not want that catalyzing in the atmosphere while I've got uh, gel coat spraying going on in the next room
Okay, well that sort of went as to be expected. Um, not great, but you know, it never does. There's always something. Um, I had a couple of uh, couple of little issues, but it's such a big module, you know, it's huge. And to spray every surface of it to perfection, I've got a little bit of a double up here, but it's uh, it's gone off. So I'll be able to just sand that lightly before I start laminating. Um, you can see down in here on these little uh, recesses here, which are actually where the uh, the teak or the the um, fake teak or the flooring comes butts up against on the stairs, uh, they are very difficult areas. So, what I am likely to do is get my spray gun out and give it a really light bang just over the top of those sections there, because they're the areas I'm really going to have to pay attention to tomorrow and in these sort of 90 degree corners in here but yep pretty good result i mean it's 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 perfect all over it's just that it uh, could have been a lot easier for me <laughs> i think if i had more space and i could walk around the spray the overspray area i'd probably be sorted well let's have a look up here i mean this this is pretty much gone to plan this is absolutely perfect there's a couple of dribbles of overspray up there um slightly concerned but they seem to be catalyzing and you know running my hand down here it's all dry and that was only oh, across it's 40 minutes ago lucky if i was lucky so uh looking pretty good man that's about the biggest one i've done apart from the hole and uh, i had a lot of help with the hole so you know it's, it's done and then there's a couple of areas up here i've got a little bit of uh too much a little bit too much material but again it's uh it's catalyzed it's not uh it's just a lump so i'll wait for that to set i think i think i might give it another hour or so before i touch it again but yeah definitely um definitely not a bad result given the complexity of the shape i'm sticking to the floor here but yeah i've got a pretty complex shape here and, and it's a big mother to do as a one-man job but anyway it's going to get done and the great thing is once the gel coat's on i just take my time and as long as i get a tie layer on it I'll be, uh, I'll be in a good place. So a massive part of my, um, my day is preparation. I mean, those of you that have done uh, some pretty major projects know that even a small amount of work needs a lot of preparation. I'm just getting prepared after the gel coat day last night or late yesterday afternoon to now laminate is, uh, is a three or four hour exercise to get everything right, to get the machine right, to get the room right, to get all your cloths. Uh, cut and ready and I do sections at a time so right now I'm going to do the top of the uh, bow staircase and down the sides and then that'll be it and then I'll clean my equipment with acetone and start again I certainly won't clean my gun out I'll clean the tip out but uh, I don't need to clean the whole gun like I've just done a complete clean on the gun to clean to move from gel coat to resin so um, part of the preparation is that I seal this room off. It's once again an enclosed, sort of semi-enclosed room with extraction. And I've got a, a blind here so that I can protect. You see here my gel coat machine, my compressor, and all of my um, all of my materials are outside of the room. And the hose then goes into the room, so I don't get a covered in debris and overspray in the work. So um, these cafe blinds that I use here are great because I can shut them and open them as I need to. So basically, this one here now needs to be closed. And then I've got a small uh, sort of bubble wrappy door there that just shuts it off and that, that stops any overspray getting on my you know, tools and my kayaks that I've got stored in this shed. So preparation is everything in this game. 